Thank you and good morning. So I'm Mark Pivak from uh, FBR. And uh, one thing I know is that technology and automation has the potential to unleash human potential. To do these creative things, to do stuff which we've never done before. But to do that, we have to release people from the drudgery of repetitive tasks. And to a large extent, that's been done in factories. What I also know is that over the next few years, next few decades, there's going to be a lot more people on this planet, probably another three billion more than what's here now. Those people are going to need housing. What we don't have is a skilled workforce that can do that. What we don't have is a new generation that wants to do those dull and dangerous and dirty jobs. Why would you? We've been encouraged with our mobile phones, technology. We're doing more creative things. Jim's talked about it with uh, the interaction of humans and AI can achieve a better result than either humans or AI can achieve by themselves. But to do that, we have to take the precision that we achieve inside factories, outside. And the big question is, why hasn't that been done? Here we've got on the left an industry that's about 100 years old, the car industry. It's so automated now that you can walk into a lot of car factories and hardly see a person. The only people there are the managers or the people maintaining the robots or people involved in the supply chain in and out, bringing materials in, taking complete cars out and doing a few jobs that we haven't been able to automate. On the right up there, we see a typical bricklayer. Sure, he's wearing a plastic hard hat and they didn't have those 6,000 years ago, but that industry hasn't changed very much. Why? Why is that the case? There's a few trillion bricks laid every year around the world, so it's not through lack of numbers. We heard Bruno talk about how ants have been able to um, build a house. Took nature a few hundred million years to figure that, figure that out. And that's fantastic, but we don't have a few hundred million years to house the coming population. So what FBR's done is figure out what we need to do to take the precision of indoor robotics outside. So let's have a look at some of the characteristics of what happens inside a factory. Inside that factory, most of those robots are sitting in one position. The material's brought to them. They do their task. They pass the job on to the next robot, which does its task. And then at the end of the day, the finished product pops out and then humans deal with it. Work sites are a little different to that. We have a big area where there's a lot of different jobs going on. We can't feed a house through a production line although many people have tried, and indeed today, there are a lot of modular buildings constructed in factories, delivered to site, but the logistics are not insignificant. You know, the bricks in a typical house weigh maybe 80 tonnes. Moving that around is not practical. So what we need is robots that can go to site. What we see in the factory is pretty constant conditions. Constant temperature, there's no wind, there's no sun, there's no rain. Out on the job site, it's completely different. Every job site's different. We can't bolt the robots to the ground. The construction site starts as just mere earth. In the factory, what we see is robots which have been calibrated to do their precise job. Sure, they've been built accurate, but most robots coming straight out of the factory are not accurate enough to do the job which they're made to do. Technicians have to get in there and calibrate the robot so that it knows that this piece is exactly here. Sure, you can calibrate it, but over time things change. So we're faced with a similar issue out on the job site. How do we calibrate these things? How do we calibrate it, especially when we can't even bolt it down? We're working on dirt. In the factory, things don't change much over time. The, the factory environment's usually a fairly constant temperature. And the robots are also working in a fairly small area. 
when we go outside, we're dealing with robots which have to work over the entire building site. Might be for a house, 25 metres. For a building like this, maybe 100 metres. In the factory environment, the robot might work over a few metres. So on the outside environment, the effects of thermal expansion are significant. In the factory, they can be taken account of with measurement equipment. We need to do the same kind of thing outside on the construction site. There's a few other issues as well which need to be dealt with. In the factory, we see that robots are generally isolated from people. Only in the last few years of international standards come out which allow cobots, the interaction of industrial robots with humans. But we have to make sure that happens in a safe way. Those robots have to be either very low power and very low speed or, or danger potential to the human, or they need to sense the presence of humans so that they can't hurt the human. If a human, it's usually the humans that are the problem, they go and try and interact with the robot when they shouldn't and the robot accidentally hurts the human. So if we take robots out to a construction site, we have to keep the people safe as well. So we have to solve that problem. So with all those problems, that explains what hasn't been done. The patent history for automated bricklaying goes back at least to the 1850s, the time of the Industrial Revolution. People thought uh, they'd be able to automate the bricklaying process, and indeed you can. Laying bricks, putting a brick on a wall is not the problem. It's the complexity of the typical house. Even a four-bedroom, two-bathroom house has perhaps 50 walls in it. So if you had some piece of mechanical equipment set up to build just one wall, that's not solving your problem. A person would have to go in and set up that machine for every new wall, 50 walls. Have a look at the complexity of this room. This is a room with four walls. Yep. If you go to build it out of bricks, you see all these little bits uh, coming in and out. So um, our brick layer from 6,000 years ago uh, is very, very difficult to turn into a robot. So here's our solution. And I'll point out a few things here. So here's a robot laying the brick. That's the easy, easy part of it. It's getting that brick to that final laying position that's the hard bit. How do we do that? How do we actually know that that laying position is exactly where we want it to be on the building site? So in this here, we deliver the bricks to a single position on the robot. The robot then moves the bricks through a saw if they need to be cut, and then it moves them through the boom, down to where they need to be laid on the building site. Here we see a time-lapse video sped up, showing how the building is built layer by layer. So each brick is placed exactly where it needs to be in 3D space. We can work in day or night. We know where the position of the robot is through laser trackers, those things there, which measure the end position of the boom. And this is used to enable what we call DST, or dynamic stabilisation technology. So there's the finished... There's the finished house. And here we'll have a little bit more of a look at what DST is about. When you have a long boom, big long boom, so we can reach over the entire building site. The long boom's flexible, it'll bounce around. So what we need to do is we need to measure the end position of that boom. And we do that by tracking this location up here in six degrees of freedom. We measure the position and the orientation, the roll, pitch and yaw of that position. We do that very fast, we do it to micron accuracy. Sorry, we do it to micron resolution. Over 25 metres, it's virtually impossible to have micron accuracy because everything varies. But that micron, accuracy, uh, that micron resolution and the sub-millimetre accuracy and knowing the orientation allows us to work out the end position of this brick. And this part here is a high-speed, very dynamic robot 
which compensates for the error which we see here at the end of the boom so that the brick ends up in the correct location. Now there's a whole bunch of other issues which you have to deal with, things like thermal expansion. Between a cold morning and a hot afternoon, the building can expand by perhaps five or six millimetres. So we have to know how that expansion is taking place during the day. Otherwise the bricks at the top of the house will be, say, six millimetres in the wrong position compared to those at the bottom. Manual bricklayers do it by setting up strings and all that sort of thing. We do it with the laser trackers, which m measure that position. So that sounds great. Bricklayer turns up to build a house. He's got a pretty basic set of tools, a trowel, a wheelbarrow, cement mixer, maybe a few hundred dollars worth of equipment. Here we've got a few million dollars worth of equipment at today's prices. So how's that going to be practical? So to get this robotic technology out on site, building houses, to make an impact on the world, we have to also solve that commercial problem. So how do we do that? And FBR's approach to that is to offer wall as a service so that the capital equipment, the expense, the expertise required to operate these machines will be maintained in an organisation that knows how to do it so that the builders who really have no interest in robotics, they're not that interested in automation, they're not that interested in technology, can in the same way that they ring up a, a bricklayer now to say, I need the walls of our codex building built, they can ring up a robot and have the robot do it. So in essence, what's required to bring the precision of robotics that we currently see in factories is dynamic stabilisation technology, which enables a realistic big robot to work outside to extreme precision, and a business model which allows that technology to be brought to market. So my prediction for the future is that you're going to see a lot more of this. You're going to see Hadrian X on site, You're going to see laser trackers tracking the ends of booms with dynamic stabilisation technology. And this is just the beginning. This technology today is the worst it will ever be. Technology only gets better with time. This technology will embrace all types of robotic construction. So really the bold prediction is that now is the time that robotics will move outside and it will build not just houses, but eventually lots of buildings, and it will be as normal to see construction robots on site as it is to see a bricklayer or a carpenter. Thank you.